another way of thinking of price competition and quantity competition is to say why would there be price competition? Why would firms want to set prices and let the quantity adjust? Sometimes it is very difficult to actually adjust prices. The guy who is small business, you know, a uh, guy selling fishes, fish or whatever, vegetables, they can quickly adjust their prices. Think about a multinational firm, the price of biscuits that you buy. The price is determined at the marketing division, somebody out there saying, okay, we will set this price. And the guy who is at the bottom, the finally who is selling the product to the wholesaler or somebody, typically has no power to set, change those prices. So what is oligopoly? Oligopoly is a situation where the firms are aware that they are interdependence, that they are interdependent. And so typically we will say that there are few firms in the market. What else can an oligopoly be like? A good, a homogeneous or not, does not matter. The good can be homogeneous or not homogeneous. Either way it can be an oligopoly. Obviously, if there are a few firms, then there must be some barriers to entry. So, it is not like monopoly where there is just one firm, but there are few firms. Obviously, it is difficult for new firms to come in and uh, good may be homogeneous or not and few firms and the firms are interdependent. So, that is how an oligopoly is. What we like to talk about is first of all concentration. How concentrated is the market? And a very simple thumb rule for concentration, we talk about the 4 slash 5 firm concentration ratio. So, you look at the market share of the top 4 firms or the top 5 firms. Right? So, if the top 4 firms have 80 percent of the market, then the concentration ratio is 80 or the top 5 firms, whatever. So, this is a rule of thumb measure. If, if the number is pretty large, then you say, ha, ah, the market is quite concentrated. But you can easily see that it is not also a very good measure. Suppose there are, we are considering the four firm concentration ratio and there are two in industry 1 and industry 2. And suppose the market share in industry 1, the top four firms enjoy 80 percent of the total market share. Firm 1, 2, 3, 4, everybody has 20 percent. And here suppose firm 1 has 50 percent and the other three have 10 percent, which is more concentrated? Industry 2, right? You would say industry 2 is obviously more concentrated than industry 1. But if you do this four firm concentration ratio, obviously that difference between the two industries will not show up. So, to get around that, we have a another way of measuring concentration. So, which is known as the Hirschman Herfindahl index and for obvious reasons it is called HHI. What it does is it takes the share of each firm and then squares it. So, HHI is equal to the sum of S1 square plus S2 square plus Sn square. So, the sum of the squares of the market shares of all the firms which are there in the industry. What would be the HHI for a perfect competition? All of these should be 0, right? Because each firm is too small. So, all the zero squared up, 10 million zero squared will give you 0. So, for perfect competition, you will get 0. What for a, how much for a monopoly? So, it would be 100 percent, right? The monopolist has 100 percent of the market. So, 100 squares equal to 10,000. So, this is one way of thinking about concentration. A different way of thinking about it is to 
look at what is called the learner's index. And the learner's index is the price minus the marginal cost divided by price. What will this be? You, by now you should be able to tell me. 1 over elasticity of demand. So, this is actually a much better, you would say, more than concentration. Because remember, when you said monopoly power, what did we say? Things, elasticity of demand, number of firms in the market, right? Both mattered and the kind of competition that is there. So, all three together will determine what is going to happen. So, number of firms is one way of looking at it. Looking at the learner's index is another way of saying, you know, if the elasticity of demand is low, low does not mean inelastic, then your ability to charge a price higher than the marginal cost is higher. And what you can do is sometimes people find a measure of aggregate market power, which is you take the learner's index for each firm multiply it by the market share and add it up and that gives you some sort of an aggregate market power. Mm -hmm.